Dropper post woes, well, let's fix it. Dropper post, one of the best inventions in mountain biking in the last 10, 15 years. Allows us to obviously adjust the seat height as we're riding. These do need service though. Now, today we've got a one-up post, a V2 post. Pretty simple to work on. We're gonna uh, take or remove the post from the bike. Disassemble it, clean and grease everything. Check components for wear. Pretty simple job. It'll take you maybe half an hour with some basic tools. Let's get going. Okay, so step one, we're just gonna mark this, the seat post with a small screwdriver here, just so we know where uh, to put it back. You could also take tape measure in here, but I like scribing it because it's quick and convenient. So that's that done. Now we're going to loosen this bolt and we're going to loosen the one the lever and remove the seat bolt. Four more Allen key on this one. Loosen that. I'll put the lever now. going to remove this bolt here. We can just leave that in. And that's just going to give us some wiggle room to remove the seat post. Now because we loosened the lever, we can just pull this out, push in with our hand there and remove the seat post. I'll, I'll show you that a closer up. So you, you'll see here, this is the plunger that for the, act, for the actuator for the seat post. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna push this down, move it to the side, keep pushing it, and then it's gonna come off. Okay, so to service your, your seat post, you're gonna need some degreaser, some light grease, that's really important, it's lycoleum. Or if you bought your uh, seat post uh, aftermarket, like this one up one, it'll come with a little package in there. Something to clean. Uh, the internals with five mil allen key to remove the seat. Uh, you'll need a couple more allen keys, like two, two and a half, to actually remove the to take the seat post apart. Uh, adjustable wrench or some Nipex pliers like this, and a shock pump. Ideally, a digital shock pump, but you can get away with an analog one. So it's pretty simple. Um, These are the tools that you need. First step in actually servicing it, we're just, just going to clean the grease off the outside. You can see there's a little bit of wear just on there, just from this frame design. So we're going to remove that. The seat's still on, and that's just because uh, we're going to use it for leverage to undo, undo here. If you were to remove the seat before, it'd be really difficult to remove this end part here. And we're, I guess remove's not the right term right now. We're just trying to loosen. And I can use the seat to actually undo this. You'll see there now. The outer post is separate from the inner post. And now you can kind of feel just by hand, it's pretty it's pretty stiff, kind of notchy almost. So it's probably a good thing we're, we're servicing this. So I'm gonna put this back down and take a five mil Allen key and just remove the rear bolt here. Okay, and everything else will fall apart. Now, if you're, depending on your frame, if we can get away with leaving this or not adjusting this uh, front bolt here, that means when we put the saddle back on, the seat is gonna be in the same, same position. Okay, next up, down the bottom here, there's two little Allen key uh, screws there. I think there are two, I believe. Just gonna remove those so this can come off. Now we're gonna loosen this collar up here. If you're struggling with this, then you may need to, you can just stick it back in the in the bike, or probably shoot it down. It's with the saddle still on, maybe loosen that, but we're gonna loosen this collar there, that can slide up. Now this outer tube can come off, and you can kind of see the internals of the seat post here. So you got the lower bushing, you've got your, uh, just two different, lengths of brass shims here. These keep the post from twisting. And then the second one here, the smaller one, is the travel adjust. We'll take the up stop off. This ring is split, so we'll take that off. Uh, and then I'll just take these guys off too. Sometimes a pick can help with this. Okay, so one, two, three. And we've got our travel adjust shims. Come off two, one, two, three. Now these, these are all the same in terms of, you know, the, each one of these is the same. So it's not, you don't have to worry about mixing them up. Your top bushing there. And then we can slide off the seal, I guess, 
tough one pushing in there. And now we're left with the post here, air cartridge, all the components here. Uh, if the seat post had some major issues, then uh, you know, with going up and down, we'd re remove this, which you do by uh, the top, just there, uh, unscrewing that silver piece there. But we're just doing a, a minor service, so we're just going to leave that. There is also this rod, this actuary rod. Take that off as well. Now I'm going to clean all this and inspect it, and then we can assemble that together. So we're going to start with these brass chins here. A little bit debaser. We can actually inspect them. No wear. Runs here. So is it good? The rebuild kit for this seat post is pretty inexpensive. It's only 30 bucks, I think, which is probably a worthwhile investment, but you can get away just by cleaning a little bit of everything. So that looks good. Upper bushing here, or upper, the uh, not uppermost bushing, but internally will have some damage. You can see the three marks there, just where the brass shims are just been butting up against. So you can actually see that on both sides. I've already rebuilt this one once. Not really a big deal. If there's a crazy amount of damage, again, you can replace this component or just sand down the lips. But for how good this is running, I'm just going to leave that. So like that's that's pretty good. We're pushing here. Let's wipe that clean. Inspect that again. And it's got the split. There too. Seal. Now if this part here, this Teflon bushing was damaged, then you'd have we'd have to replace this, but it kind of has that kind of creamy tan color to it. It's consistent all around, so that looks good. That seal itself. Just clean this guy off. And we can clean the outer post too. Especially in the grooves here. Looks fine. There's no damage to the actual stanchion here. Then we'll clean up the top, get all this pull the dust out and the post here you can see if you look down you can see all the ridges through but we're just going to stick a rag down there and clean that out it's all the old grease turn it inside out Do an inspection still a little bit of grease there so i'm just going to keep on cleaning it okay that looks pretty decent now and then we'll just finish off by cleaning you can see with this part here this is the, this is the lower plate for the saddle it does have a, an arrow towards the front so that's important orientation to remember clean this bolt off and the top plate all clean saddle rails now to check the air pressure uh, we're going to remove this cap here now we, we want to check the air pressure when the seat post this part here is at its full extension which it is right now. So I'm gonna put on my shock pump, 236. So let me just inflate that to 300. 313, that's gonna be fine. Then we'll just remove it. Okay, so to recap, we clean the outer tube, that's all good. Actuator rod's fine. All the brass keys are good. The two plastic bushings are good enough condition we can reuse them. The uh, top bushing seal is good condition. Uh, all the bolts are clean. The actuator itself works fine. Uh, this is all clean and inspected, air pressure checked. So now we can rebuild it. Definitely need to get some light grease, slick oleum, honey, or slick honey. Any like suspension style grease is going to be what you're after. I'm going to take some of that, stick that on the inside here the bushing and the seal i'm going to stick this on first just put some more on there just now we're going to put the top bushing here the thicker bushing uh what i'm going to do is instead of leaving the inside the bushing i'm just going to where it sits i'm just going to apply some grease now we can slide this on i like to orientate the the cut in the back with the rear of the seat post so it's going to sit about there I'll grease the outside of it too. Now, uh, these three three um, indents here, I'm going to fill with grease. One, two, three. You may not be running these travel adjust spacers, only if you've lowered it where you need to install these. So in this case, we are running them. So I'm going to put three of those in first at the top, just like that. Now I'm going to place the second keys 
below that, just like so. And the grease will helps to hold the pieces in place as we're working. Now uh, comes the, the lower bushing. Again, this, the, the cut or the slit at the back, I'm gonna place towards the rear of the seat post. So that can just slide on like that. We can grease the outside. I'm gonna take our outer sleeve, outer and grease in there. Now, obviously the, the writing on the back is towards the rear. The eight newton meter mark is also to the rear. Now we're gonna slide this through and we're gonna to have to find where it's gonna locate. So just got it there, but just by twisting, and you see if I twist that round, it's not going to go. But if I twist it straight, then we get that in. We also get this in. Two bits of the poster coming together. Push, push the lower bushing down just by pressing it up against the top seal and pushing the outer tube down in. Now we can tighten this up. So now we have an almost fully assembled seat post. The actual outer shaft goes up and down nice. We're going to put our actuator rod back into its place. The actual actuator itself, we're going to go on the end. And you can see there's a recess there that if I thread this on, you should be able to see all the way through. What's going to happen is when we put the bolt on, the bolt's actually going to sit right in, right in there or attaches the two, so that's fully seated. I'm just gonna install these, just quick. Before I do that, I'll do that like this. There we go, and I'll do that. Okay, and I'll just get the other one. The actuator is attached, lower the post through, so I have to spin this on. And we're not gonna be able to torque it down properly until we get the seat on, or we can get it most of the way. Now I'm just gonna go grab the bike stand, just so it's easier to film with putting the saddle back on and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so uh, we've got all the parts cleaned. These nuts are indexed, they are square, so they only fit in the back here in one, in one direction. So I'm gonna put the rear one in and then try and insert the front one. There we go, just like that. Now we're gonna put the saddle on, I'm gonna tilt, tilt the saddle sideways, install it behind the first or, or past its uh, locator tab, which is there. On the other side, that gives us room to go down and then back. Now I've got the saddle actually sat properly in the rails just there. Next, we can go the right orientation like that underneath. And then we can stick the bolt up in here and get that tight. Now, when we tighten this, it's gonna be in the exact same angles as it was when we took it off because we did not adjust the front bolt. Finish off the repairs, uh, installing the remote back to its same position. Feels good. If you're very tight up to the, the top bushing here and you tighten the, the clamp too much, it will stop or it will put too much pressure on it, but that feels good. Very smooth action, the lever feels nice. Now this is just or mainly targeted at one up posts. However, most posts similar to this style are gonna be a very similar service procedure. So there is gonna be some crossover there in terms of the fundamentals, but that's how to refresh a driver post. Something you should do just like any other service, you know, maybe once a year, just refresh the grease. Certainly check in your air pressure. If the post doesn't seem to be uh, working so good, you can just remove the seat, check the air pressure, and you'll be out riding in a couple minutes. Uh, but nice to just refresh this, especially with winter coming, uh, salt and lots of lots of rain and mud. So now this is fully protected, working good, and uh, you can get it back back out riding. If you like this video, you found it useful, um, I really I appreciate it. If you liked the video, leave a comment uh, if you want to see anything else in particular. Uh, please check out my website, bikegarage31.ca. Uh, I've got a bunch of sales on right now. That's a good to take advantage of that. And uh, hopefully we'll see you next week. Thanks.